Now then, my fantastic numismatic artistic friends, are we ready to do a painting? Of course we are. These are the paints that you need to paint with me. And let's get on with it. Now, this is a painting I did a while back. and It took me a few hours to do. I was painting one night. and I spent a couple of hours doing this. So we're going to do this particular painting, but obviously a lot quicker. Now, this is the canvas. It's a white canvas, and I put on black gesso, little trees and little indications of things. Allowed that to dry completely, and then I've coated the canvas in a nice thin coat of liquid white. It's got to be thin, and it's got to be liquid white, so we can blend colour. We can blend colour and make it brighter and lighter. I'll also be answering some questions from the giveaway. I've got tons to go through, usually the same questions though, but it's, it's fantastic, it's great to answer them all. Now, on a one inch brush, I've hit the cad yellow, and a little bit of yellow ochre and we're just painting a nice little sunny glow right over this palm tree now this this particular painting is based on one i think bob ross did and it, it's a beautiful painting and i just wanted to just to copy that and recreate that and that's what i did in the original painting you saw at the beginning of the uh, the beginning of the film so moving on away from the the center so to the out to the edges we're hitting a little bit more of the golden ochre colours and brown colours and this will draw your eye into the centre of the painting and we're just painting over that black gesso and over that over that uh, yeah, uh, liquid white but I'm mixing my words up here <laughs> can't help it so we're going to darken the corners off with a bit of burnt umber as well just to draw your eye right into the centre now project Bluffer asks uh, a question. It's happy days are definitely needed on what's happened this year, absolutely. Uh, what painting makes you happy when you look at it? Well, I like paintings that are of nature, and if you're, if you're obviously watching my videos, it's all basically nature scenes. I don't don't like to paint any human interaction or or cities or anything like that. N natural paintings that's you know, you know of nature somewhere where you can escape to is when I uh, where it's quiet and peaceful you've just got you know the sounds of the birds and the bees going off in the background that's what kind of, kind of painting I like to look at now with the dry brush I'm just blending the colors together and sometimes these brushes do lose air so you might have to flick them off or just slack slightly and gently Blend all these colours together. That's all we're doing. Just make it smooth as silk. Smooth as silk. Stephen Keeley Coins. Great piece, Mr. Uh, Master Picasso. Question, what was your first Olympic find? Keep on hunting. Um, taekwondo, back in the day. Way back in the day. And I've kept that coin ever since. Right, so with a bit of white on a brush... I'm just going to paint in some sunny, you know, sunshine, some rays of sunshine coming through the jungle here. And we can use the strokes to give that indication. We can make these as bright as you want or as, uh, or as faint as you want. And we'll just go straight over that tree. We'll come back in and paint these trees later in the film. That just that little white glow will just give us a, a slight indication of uh, of some some rays of sunshine great so with a bit of a bit of liquid white on the knife all we're doing is far back here just touch of a, a water line it's so faint you can't hardly see it and remember you'd be blinded by the sun at this point as well so you just you want to make it as delicate as you can just to give the indication of some swampy water way back way back Way back there. Let's take another question from George Block. Wow, excellent painting. My question is, what is your favourite coin? Abs you know, I've said this many times. It varies between, it varies between coins. You see, with two pound coins, I'm fond of the Magna Carta, 50p's. I'm fond of the Taekwondo for obvious reasons, and and Isaac Newton is an absolutely cracking design. Um, 
but let's go for Magna Carta two pound. That that's that's one of my favourites. That's one of my favourites. Now with a bit of burnt umber on a fan brush, I'm just picking out there and here and here and there just some just some bits of undergrowth. We don't have to go crazy on this. And again, you're going to be blinded by the sun, so it's going to be a hit and miss sort of painting. And we're just reaffirming some of these these distant tree trunks. You can hardly tell that they're there. You can hardly tell that they're there. You can hardly pick them out, but they're there. Just tiny, tiny, faint little touches with the, with the fan brush. And we can pull some of that reflection down. Just like that. And it'll give us a, a little bit of reflection into the water. Again, not much. We don't want to go crazy. It'll spoil the illusion. Of, uh, of the sun, the sun beating through the trees. And again, we'll put some on here. And it's just burnt umber. And every now and again, we'll touch a bit of sap green, maybe touch a bit of black, just depends on how we're feeling. Different flavors of the paint, that's, that's all we're after. So we'll pull straight down for the, uh, for the reflection. And because the liquid white's on the canvas, you can do this. If it were a dry canvas, it would be very, very difficult very very difficult to do we're just creeping in some of that undergrowth around that palm tree there now these palm trees are done very very quickly it's no finesse there's no finesse it's not fine art it's just it's just good fun and it's escapism and I think I put on a, a post recent, recently on uh, on Instagram sometimes we need to escape especially with what's happening lately and if you're reading a book, that's a good form of escapism. If, if you're watching a good film or, or you know, even just a telephone call to, to your friends, all forms of escapism. And, and painting is my medium to escape. And I'm escaping right now into this jungle. That's all it is, that's all it is. Now I'm just putting in, I'm just reaffirming that waterliner that's scrubbed over. All we're doing, a bit of liquid white, edge of the knife, just cutting in a nice parallel little water line, and it really separates the two dark colours. And, and again, it gives that illusion that there's water there. That's all we're after. That's all we're after. Let's find another question while we're doing this. Austin Faith, who is your favourite artist? My favourite artist. Um, would obviously be Bob Ross. I think the guy was such an inspiration, such an inspiration. Fantastic artist. And, uh, and again, I also like a couple of other artists. I like Frank Clark, who does watercolours. I used to watch him a lot as a kid. And uh, again, he used to paint pictures in, in watercolours, which were about 20 minutes long, and they were absolutely fantastic to to watch. And, and I've, and I've I've done watercolour paintings before. They're quite difficult to do. <laughs> Maybe I'll get one up sometime. The, the Penny Farthing one was a, a watercolour, and that took an absolute age to do, because it's got to be done perfect. You can't blend colours out. You can't scrape paint off and start again. It's, uh, so watercolours is quite a difficult medium. I'm just rambling on now. I'm just rambling on. <laughs> so again, in this middle ground here, we're just pulling some reflections down and gently going across. This, this brush is a quite a fine brush. I've been wanting to find a really soft brush for a long time just to blend colours out and the only thing I can find are some, some watercolour brushes or um, uh, a makeup brush. <laughs> but I feel a bit awkward going into a shop and buying a, a makeup makeup brush and I don't, I don't pay... Uh, Pinch, <laughs> nearly. Don't pinch the Mrs. Masters makeup brush. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know how I got through that one. Right. So um, again, put little water lines on, and uh, let's crack on with painting. So a little bit more of the darker colour. So we've darkened this this foliage colour off with a bit more black and a touch of sap green. Maybe every now and again we'll we'll have a bit of crimson in there just to give a variant of colours. And now all we're doing is we're just tapping with the fan brush. We're not sliding the brush. We're not, we're not sliding the brush. Like we do when we pull the water 
the reflections down. That's a nice slide, just there like that. When we're creating foliage, we're just tapping. And again, that, uh, that black gesso will show through in places. So with a, this fine watercolor brush, we can blend out the, uh, the reflections. <laughs> crazy, yeah? Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyhow, a bit more waterline. Again, this is a swampy, jungly scene, so you just touch with the liquid white right on the edge of the knife. Now, if you find that the liquid white is too bright, you can dull it down with a bit of, bit of yellow or i even put a bit of green in there for this kind of painting. I'll just keep rubbing it and it'll go away. It'll blend back into the painting. It'll blend into nothing. So the water lines have to be parallel to the, to the, uh, to the base of the canvas. Or else that will disturb your eye and it'll make the water look like it's running off the edge. Now on this little brush, this um, little round brush I've got, loaded it full of brown paint, burnt umber and a touch of black just to darken it off a little bit and all we're doing is creating some, some tree trunks and again you don't have to be perfect at this just as long as it's wider at the base than at the top and if you've got a little wobble in your, in your stroke that creates some fantastic some fast fantastic trees and again, we'll put a little arm on him. Just like that. Just like so. Happy days. And we'll put another tree here. As the great man used to say, everyone needs a friend, including trees. <laughs> so we can follow the indications of the, the black gesso. We can follow the indications of the black gesso. Just like that. Happy days. Happy days. Question from uh, from John Green. My question is, do you prefer Winnie the Pooh coins or Paddington coins? Oh, mm, cracking question. See, I've not seen all the Winnie the Pooh coins. Um, and the Paddington coins, obviously, everyone's seen the towers because they're, they're, they're all over the place. And I'm, I'm, I'm torn here because if, if the... Winnie the Pooh coins go into circulation. I don't think they are, but if they were in circulation, oh, absolutely, you're on to a winner there. Um, see, the Paddington coins for me, there's an error, a Chris Packett error, and got me a lot of uh, attention, <laughs> shall we say, when that, when that was found out, when the error was found out. I didn't find the error, by the way, I was just passing on information, and, and suddenly everybody started to uh, tribute that kind of error to me, which is quite funny. <laughs> um, uh, but, but also, on the other side of the coin, on the flip side of the coin, Winnie the Pooh has a yaw, and I love Dominic the Donkey as a Christmas song, and I'm preparing right now to sing it. <laughs> I might even sing it on video. So, uh, let's go with Winnie the Pooh and Eeyaw. My f that would be, that would be my, my stab at that. So at the top of these trees, just to darken the painting off, we're putting in some some tree trunks, uh, some tree branches, sorry, and a bit of foliage on there, and just with a fan brush, just as we created the ground, the foliage on the ground. It's just the exact same stroke, the exact same colours. Just tap, 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 tap. You see trees, the foliage, all live in your brush. You've just got to practice and shake them out. That's all you got to do. You can do it. You can do it. If I can, you can. So again, we'll just darken these corners off. We've nearly got to finish painting already. We're only 14 minutes in, aren't we? But we'll work a little bit more on, on this. Again, the original that we refer back to took a couple of hours. But I wasn't, I was leisurely painting that. I, was, I wasn't going crazy like I'm going crazy on, on, on video. Uh, Joe Collects. Hi, Joe Collects. Good luck, everyone. My question is, what is your favourite coin? Well, again, two-pound coin Magna Carta would be a favourite of mine. Taekwondo uh, from the Olympic set. And as general 
release 50 piece, possibly Isaac Newton. Possibly. But my mind changes every day. I, I might, I might, you see, I, I recently picked up the equestrian um, os jumping coin. And when you look at that, and how intricate that horse is on that coin, you don't really realise. But it, it's a beautiful design. A beautiful design. So with a really thin brown paint, so I thin this off with a bit of paint thinner, and the paint thinner will evaporate quite quickly, so this paint will, will dry pretty rapidly, this thin paint. All I'm doing is putting some sticks, some arms, some twigs, whatever you want to call them on these trees. And practice, all you need to do is practice. Now you may have seen some of my, some of my shorts videos, where all I do is just practice, uh, a painting, whatever I'm doing, and then just paint over it and then practice again. Now, the question can be asked, do I prefer to make the sticks and twigs by painting up or like I'm doing now, pulling down? It's your preference. As an artist, you, you choose. Just find a way that works for you and, and run with it. Just, just go with it. I prefer to, uh, to start off with a bit of pressure and then uh, and then lightly lift up but uh, it's your choice at the end of the day it's your choice as an artist so let's have a question from uh, Andrew Collects Coins howdy Andrew um, what kind of art do you like now I like any art anything that anyone creates is obviously somebody spent time to do and they put some thought and some effort into it whether it's a doodle or a full blown masterpiece I like any kind of art as mediums what I prefer to use uh, I'm obviously doing an oil painting here uh, but I used to do a lot of uh, acrylic painting uh, uh, from various times and, uh, and, and watercolours are quite nice as well there's other things, oil pastels as well I've got some oil pastels which I'm gonna gonna hopefully show you at some point um, but yeah, any kind of art any kind of art so with a knife and a bit of brown paint now this is made up from uh, from burnt umber and with a touch of white in there all we're doing is is touching the side of these trees and just touch 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 and let the canvas take off what it wants and leave the leave the rest on the knife and what we're doing here is creating an illusion of bark and when this painting dries, you'll be able to feel the bark as well as see it. It's, it's a really nice effect. And we'll do some on this, this stump here. Now we need to find out which is his light source. So his light is obviously coming from the left hand side. So we need to make the left hand side of these trees a little bit lighter than the right hand side. So we'll vary the colours. And when I'm mixing on the palette, I'm not over mixing. I'm leaving the paint still like a, a marbled effect. So if I take two colours and loosely mix them together, it creates a marbled effect. And that will also give you a variance of colour in your trees and, and with everything you're painting, from snow on a mountain to, to, to bark on a tree trunk. So all we're doing, touch and lift, touch, touch, touch. This is a bit of a darker colour. So we'll paint the shadow side of the tree. all we're doing that's just delicate just very delicate all the way up great question from Mackie's lover my question is where are you from i'm from yorkshire Mackie. i'm from yorkshire they ought to know that with the accent but maybe you don't maybe you're not from even this country maybe the english language all merges into one from from Scottish accents right down to the to the Norfolk accent. <laughs> Again, I just waffle on sometimes. I just waffle on. So um, a bit more darker colour here and there on these tree trunks. That's it. Just like that. Again, when it dries, it will feel like bark. It will feel so so realistic and look realistic as well. You just play with this colour. It's a bit hard to see on camera, but when the painting's done, you'll be able to fully see 
George B. Good luck, everyone. Hope you're having a good day. My question is, who is your favourite coin tuber? Oh, now that's that's an easy question to to answer. I I like this guy called Steve. Steve from Coin Closet. He hasn't done any videos lately, but uh, he's uh, he's a fantastic he's a fantastic bloke with uh, an absolute killer of a uh, of dress sense. You may have seen Steve appear on Andy Coin Cupboard's channel from time to time. There we go. So a little bit more white paint, or lighter paint, should we say? The browns mixed with white. Just touching, just delicately touching. Let the canvas take what it wants. Leave, leave you with the rest, like the tax man. <laughs> there we go. Dan Smith, question, your favourite Olympic coin? Again, it's Taekwondo. I found that coin when I was, uh, when I was um, training back in 2011. And uh, I must have got it in my change from, from somewhere. Uh, possibly, possibly the sports centre, because I, uh, I put it in my kit bag next to me, martial arts licence and other bits and pieces, gum shield and stuff. And uh, it was in there ever since. Well, like I've just said, take a closer look at some of them Olympic coins because there's some absolute belters in there. I, I can't get over how fantastically fascinating the, the detail on the horse jumping one is. And you'll see, I've, I've, I've highlighted it in the video. I don't know if the video's gone out or, or yet, but um, possibly not. But it's an absolute belter of a coin. Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast, my question is what car do you own? What car do I own? I, um, I've got some Hot Wheels cars and some Matchbox cars. You know, just, just like toy cars. Um, as, a, as opposed to vehicles, um, I, I'd rather a nice big black car. That's all I can say on that matter. And it's fast. Good stuff. Right, so um, down at the bottom here, we're just reaffirming some of this undergrowth. Darken the edges off, draws your eye into the centre. Just like that, just with a fan brush. We haven't even cleaned this fan brush, we're just varying the colours as we go along. That's all we're doing. That's all we're doing. Just in the greens here, the browns. Again, if you make the corners dark, the four corners darker, your eye will instantly draw into the centre. Now using that same fan brush, but just changing the stroke so you can create some ferns that are growing up. Remember, this is like a jungly scene, so there'll be all sorts of ferns and and and, and jungly looking things. And they all live in your fan brush, you've just gotta, just gotta shake them free. Okay, a question from Jake Hughes. My question is, do you sell any of your artwork? No, I don't, Jake, uh, not at this moment in time. I am looking into either a website or a gallery or something like that in the future, but um, I, don't, I don't really sell, just, I just paint for fun. Paint for the freedom and the fun of it uh, at, at this moment in time. Again, we're just putting in some more jungly things here and there. Ian Bridget, he says, Unreal giveaway from an awesome guy. Thanks, thanks, Ian. <laughs> okay, um, I think we're almost done with the, with the painting. I think we're almost done with the painting. Just a few more highlights to us up here. Just, just reaffirm it. I mean, like I say, you can paint and you can play for hours and hours and hours on end. All you've got to do is have the time and the practice and the patience to do this. That's all you need. That's all you need. There we go. A bit more down here. And I think we're about done. I think we're about ready for a signature, guys. So how did you find this one? We'll, we'll have a look in a minute. We'll have a look and we'll compare and we'll contrast what we've done so let's just sign it down here 
really bit of thin red paint just initially down in this bottom corner so do thank i do thank you all for watching please subscribe like comment share hit the notification bells now let's compare the two paintings so there we have one that took a few hours one that took 20 odd minutes happy days i'll see you all later my fantastic friends do take care happy days